Good morning. Welcome to our morning walk. Callie and I are out. I've uh, done my exercise for the day. I've been in 2 Timothy and Titus in the Word. It was all good. Uh, but what I wanted to tell you about this morning was a dream that I had early this morning. I, I dreamt that I was with several guys who were the heads of our denomination. Now, they weren't the guys who are the heads of our denomination. It was a dream, so uh, I didn't really know these people. Wouldn't know their names or whatever, but I, I felt their situation. They were leading the church in a direction they felt the Holy Spirit was prompting them to lead. But it wasn't a popular way of going. There were a lot of people resisting. There were a lot of people threatening. Uh, it just was not a comfortable time to be in leadership. The superintendent's wife in this dream bought him a gift. It was a, a bear that looked a little bit like a clown. And out of its mouth came all these little cheering people. They were, you know, yelling, yay, waving their arms, jumping up and down. And, uh, and he looked at it, and he got angry. And, and he said to her, do you think I'm in this just for the applause? And then it hit him what it was all about. It, it struck his heart that he wasn't serving the Lord so that everybody would like him, so that everybody would sing his praises. He served the Lord to do what the Lord wanted him to do. So he shared it with the assistant superintendent. And that uh, fella got it right away. He felt the conviction in his heart. And so they were simpatico on the, on the whole event. But then they went and shared it with another member of the team. And he was, he was just severely offended that they showed it to him. They thought, he thought they were accusing him of being self-centered and being in the ministry for the wrong reasons. And he goes stomping out of the room to sulk for a while. <laughs> and that's when I woke up. The, uh, my assumption was that the superintendent and the assistant superintendent were just going to give the guy time to get it uh, for it to strike home. And again, my assumption was that he would get it and that this team would be able to lead in a righteous way. We just happen to be in a, a point of history where mores values are changing. Some things have come to light recently that needed to come to light. Some wrongs have been perpetrated. And uh, there, there are a lot of things I'm learning about in these days that I never knew took place. Uh, some atrocities and so on that are very sad. Uh, things need to be corrected. There needs to be change. But while we're changing injustices and uh, wrong procedures. We have to be careful not to throw the baby out with the bathwater, as the saying goes. There are people who want to have freedom to do things that ought not be done. They want injustices to be justified. And so it's a very difficult time that while you're affirming some, you're not affirming all. And while you're making some changes, you're not changing everything. While you'll make some people, I don't know if happy's the right word, at least feel a little better, you're gonna make other people angrier. And all of us are sitting back, and we all have to make our own judgments on these things, uh, where we land on all of the issues. And I think as a church, as the church, 
we're going to have to be very careful in the next little while. Everything's changing. There are changes we'll need to make. But all be careful what changes you make and what the reasoning behind it will be. Are we trying to make everybody happy? Are we trying to make everybody pleased with what we say, what we believe, what we think? Are we in this for the acclaim and the glory? Or are we in this to serve the Lord? And if that is the case, then there will be a price to pay. There will be a backlash against the truth real soon. And those who stand for what the Bible teaches as righteousness and right, I'm afraid they're going to be ostracized even in large part by others in the church, others who call themselves part of the church. And it's going to have to, we're going to have to face, we're going to have to answer the questions. Why are we in this? Are we willing to pay the price? What are the consequences? What if we don't pay the price? What if we just go along? What if we just say the things that society wants us to say and, and uh, affirm everybody, no matter what they do, and uh, no behavior is off the table? Well, then there is no church anymore. We are not representing Christ. In fact, we become an enemy of the Lord. And we're teaching a different, a false gospel they can save no one and that does away with the last only great hope for the world and that hope is that the church preaches the truth lives it in front of them in such a way that the Holy Spirit convicts their heart that they leave their sin and they follow the Lord so be careful what you're listening to. Be careful what you believe. Be sure to get a lot of time in the Word. I was just reading in 2 Timothy that uh, the Word of God is, is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction. It, it is the truth. It will adjust our thinking, just as Romans 12 tells us uh, don't be conformed any longer to the thinking of this world and it's not like the thinking of this world is constant they want us to be in flux and ever changing along with their mores and what they believe so stay in the word stay true to Christ and then we'll be ready on the day he returns. And it's his applause, his acclaim, that we're looking forward to. Father, we pray that you'd help us to stay true to you. We like it when everybody likes us and everything's going smooth. But we sense that those days are quickly coming to a close and there will be a price to pay like Paul paid, Peter, James, and John. Oh, please, may we be ready. May we make you proud. May we stay on the straight and narrow. Thank you for all this help. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless. Hope to see you again soon.